So I wanted to start off by reminding you guys that the due date for the boss fight challenge is next Thursday the 10th. Uh, please get your stuff finished and submitted into the challenge submissions category. Uh, do not forget this. Um, probably next week, tw the 12th, there will be a Portrait Studio sale, a weekend sale, starting Friday and ending Sunday. Um, this is just another way for me to allow you guys, since the update was extended even further, another way for me to allow any stragglers who don't have a copy um, to grab it. Uh, the sale won't be as low as the one that passed, of course. Uh, those only happen twice um, 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 a year, and those are like 50% off. Sometimes it's 60% off last last October. Um, but uh, but now it's just uh, you know it's it's uh, just an opportunity for anyone who wants to get it at a, a lower p price than it is right now. Um, and I've just uh, I've decided that'll be next weekend because I still have to run through it and review it just one more time to make sure that everything is 100% uh, and ready for update. So before that update gets rolled out on the 14th, um, which is the last for sure, 100% for sure day, we're going to release it. That's why I'm allowing it to be announced today as a 100% sure day. I never really do that. Uh, unless I know for sure that it can. So the 14th of was assured me that it is possible to release today, in fact, but we just want to um, perfect it even further. Uh, so the 14th is the for sure day the update will roll out. It'll have a hand model, it'll have updated forms, it'll have updated models, everything will look wonderful. Um, you will get form studies in this one. There are form study shapes. A lot of people ask me, is there like, is it portraits only? No, it's called Portrait Studio, but it has form studies. It has low polys. It has all kinds of different foliage um, uh, models in there as well. Um, and that will all be available uh, for you guys, for anyone currently owning it on the 14th. Uh, so if you want to support us, you want to buy it, uh, but it's just a little bit too expensive, the 12th, the weekend of the 12th will be your last chance. Um, and then there won't be any up, any kind of sale until October. Um, of this year or, or maybe further than that, maybe January next year um, because we kind of need to lay off Portrait Studio for a while and focus on something else. Uh, so no more <laughs> sales or updates um, unless of course we need an update. Uh, so the 10th is the due date again to remind you guys for the challenge please make sure you're there if you submitted something. Um, if you can't make it um, and I look at your work uh, you can always just look at the recording I usually upload those but I like when people attend the challenge due dates try to attend them um, I do work very hard to make sure everyone gets a critique and sometimes people really are get very very vocal when they don't get a critique even though a hundred percent of the critiques apply to them it's just some sort of I don't know what it is it's some sort of really childish thing that happens and the student gets really really angsty if they don't get a critique um, uh, so just don't do that if you want a critique and um, just make sure you submit on time don't be a straggler uh, don't submit five minutes before while the, while the, while the music's playing I mean I'm not gonna grab it then and uh, make sure you submit a day before if you submit after obviously I won't be able to get to it sometimes I do an extra day in case a lot of people submit I don't think there's a lot of people for this one usually environments are not very inviting a lot of people love doing character designs um, but I offer you guys environments so you guys can learn as well but uh, please do attend if you are submitting and participating attend that day and I think that's it if anyone interested patreon term has already started for this month for May uh, but if anyone's interested in becoming a patron you can also join as just a watcher to help support the the channel we are aiming for a thousand patrons be it this year or next or in the next 10 years it will happen somehow um, so if you want to support the channel and give back a little bit you can through patreon uh, but for the apprentice tier, you do get assignments, you get a discord group, you get content, you get uh, all my brushes, you get a lot of stuff. Um, and that is it. Let's jump into these. <clears throat> so um, I looked at this one last time. I was trying to find it at the end of last class. I made sure I remembered not to forget um, that this is one I really wanted to look at because a lot is going on. Um, a lot of gut gusto. Is it gusto? Gutso? A lot of guts. Took, it must have taken for the artist to try this because it is a low angle perspective, it is a creature, and it is full of subsurface scattering. So for a full, you know, the real question when it comes to subsurface scattering is where is the direction? What direction is everything coming from? Where, what direction is the light coming from? So if there is a rim light behind him, then that means 
that the light is behind him, not above him. If it was above him, we'd have more drowning shadows probably at the top of the character just around here. Lots and lots of long shadows extending if the light was above him, right? The light's not above him. The light is behind him, uh, a little bit behind and below. Uh, so that means that the cast shadows are going in this direction. So why is the arm not in a cast shadow? Because this it does, it's not that far. The shoulder is not that far from the head. So to make sense of this a little bit, what I am going to do is just cast a shadow there to start off, just to make a little bit more sense with what we're seeing here. Okay. And I'm just going to cast that shadow up until here. All right, so that makes a little bit more sense. That's the cast shadow of the uh, the head on the arm. Um, the reason why we're seeing subsurface scattering is because we are on the shadowed side. So that is why we even see it. And I'm also going to extend the little um, light on the ear is a little bit higher because there is the cast shadow of the head expanding. So remember that a cast shadow, you have object number one and object number two. Let's say it's the same size. A light over there works like a vanishing point. So the cast shadow of object number one is not the same size as object number two, even though the objects are the same size. The cast shadow, like a flashlight, emanates an even larger projection of itself, of the shape it comes from, because the light is a vanishing point. So after knowing this, you can make object number two any size you want, just as long as you remember that the cast shadow of object number one should be expanded, projected. If the light source is so close and it is larger than or equal to the object, then you will get an equal representation of the cast shadow of the object. It won't be a projection. It won't be an enlargement. The cast shadow will be the same size as the object casting it, depending on the light's behavior. But most of the time, the lights we have in a dark room, massive subsurface scattering, probably the light source is going to be at some sort of point light or uh, some kind of uh, really, really laser type uh, focus through a window from a sunlight in a dungeon or something like that. Um, and that kind of makes a little bit more sense. So now that we've figured out the direction of the light source, we've cast some cast shadows appropriately, let us go into liquify and talk about the perspective. Um, so the biggest, actually let's do this first, the biggest giveaway for the perspective is that we are supposed to be seeing the lower part of his face. So I'm just gonna cast a shadow here, not cast a shadow. I'm just gonna create a separation here. Because we're seeing, I got rid of the nostril because it's completely off perspective. So the lower part of his chin is supposed to be looking up at the light. So we're, we're the camera is lower than him, but the nose was level with the camera. All right, so it has to be behind the rest of the face. And then we've got the whole, oh shit, the whole eye has to be a little bit more tilted and forward and hidden. The top of the head is gone. I'm so sorry, mods. And I have to make the mouth seem like it's smiling in its craziness, but a little bit more in perspective. And that means it can do a little thing like that. Okay, and I'm going to show a little bit more of the jaw and the lower neck area. And I'm just going to extend that there. Okay. I'm going to bring back that evil in the face. I'm not sure what you were going for. So now that we've done that, we can figure out the nose. The nose has got, obviously, two nostrils. One nostril there, one nostril there, and then we've got the top of the nostril. So we've got the far side of this nostril. So that means the far side is really what gets the most subsurface scattering, and the nostril, the one that's facing us, gets a bit light, yeah, sure. But what you did was that you made the whole face under subsurface scattering like the face was a flat piece of paper. 
and the light shone through it and the whole thing was flat. You need to show that there are more opaque areas in the face. The face isn't just one big that b like ball of fat. It's, it's not a big bag of fat. It's got bone in it and densities and, and muscle and really, really dense muscle. And it's not transparent or translucent. And, and yeah, the cartilages are, of course. I'm also going to have to correct the ear. Okay. To be a little bit higher. And then half the nose should be in shadow. Just like that. And then the rim light is, is just really cheesy. A cheesy rim light is when what happens when a student goes overboard and thinks that, yes, this is my long lost love outlining. I have missed you so. And they end up just way overdoing it. Rim light doesn't work like that. It's not just a rim of light. It's, it's anywhere where you have hair or peach fuzz in the face, that's where you, you typically get some. And rim light isn't a phenomenon. It's just an angle for the camera. It, rim light can be a side view, can be half light on the face that is just taken from a certain angle. Rim light isn't a phenomenon. You're either in a you know, silhouette and you're getting some rim light, which makes a little bit more sense than actually referring to it as a rim light. It's just a silhouette at that point with, of course, the, the light behind it. But even then, it's not rim light because the, the, the silhouette, the other half of it that we don't see is drowned in light. Okay, so the nose is a little bit short now that I had to correct this, so I'm just going to extend it along the original design, which is way further. Okay. Right, and then this lip is in front, so this lip should be a little bit darker. And then we've got one lip in front of the other. Now we've got one nostril. The far nostril can be in light because it's completely drowning in the light. The one on the far side, and then we flip. Okay. Now we do a little bit more. And I'm gonna get that pure yellow and just apply some of it on the nose. The perspective is still extremely off, but I can only do so much right now. But typically, if I were to sketch it, you should have decided on you know, what angle we were seeing the head in first. And we were seeing this kind of angle for the head. The shoulder was right in front. The nose as a pyramid sits like that. Um, and then the chin as an extra extension. Uh, just like this and then now you know what to sketch on so you don't have to sketch along this robotically you can just do your own thing uh, but now you know that the nostrils weren't perfectly side view you have to show the other nostril you have the chin in the way that you have to show the bottom of the you know the jawline for and then you've got the mouth is somewhere in the middle and then the eyes following the cheekbones just like that so what you did was completely off um, it wasn't really right in any way. It was a completely completely incorrect use of subsurface scattering and com just, just the wrong angle completely uh, in the perspective. Uh, so those are two, two really big things. One thing that I recommend you rush before the other is of course the perspective problem. Always do some perspective studies. It's not hard. Drawing a couple cubes stacked, it really changes the way you think. Another more advanced for, uh, perspective study is a form study. Um, in perspective. Um, that's always a great way to kind of get your mind wrapped around rendering at something in perspective. Um, the nose as a whole could be a lighter value. So this could have been the only instance you have where you drown one entire unit in pink because the nose extends so far away from the face. But at this point, you have to show off that there is a point where all that stops and there is layering. So not everything is equally exposed. Um, then there's a light bouncing off his chest, I assume is where all this is coming from. A little bit under the chin, I mean the, the cheekbone, and then that extends all the way up there. A little bit under the ear, 
but all in all it's still too exposed I feel like um, you really need to establish where you're I don't know this is not rim light over here so that you need to really ease that up it, the light is pretty weak considering that it's not lit up the room yet so you could kind of relax a little bit with your use of rim light all around especially any area that's just completely tilted away from the light okay and then whatever is allowing these muscles to be visible that's what I would use on the side of his body just like that just gonna throw in some extra musculature and rib cage and stuff and that should be that and I'll show you where it was before and you'll see what I mean with the perspective being so completely off so two really big changes um, it's not like it is on paper the human body is not a flat translucent transparent piece of paper it's got layers and layers of opaque um, uh, density and it is not a flat piece of paper considering perspective so perspective it is a a whole three dimensions of, of volume that you're missing with the side view that you had so you have no perspective at all you had no lower part of the chin nothing was matching I still would just completely put a cheekbone because look at how high this cheekbone is <clears throat> I would still put this cheekbone like right on top of the eye just like that have more eyeball um, less of the uh, brow bone is visible on the other side. Here, let me uh, throw another little, a little dude. The lip is in front of the other nostril. Uh, so, yeah. <clears throat> uh, the, this lighting may be some sort of spotlight, hence the intensity, but it's not lighting up the room. Um, a spotlight should still be able to, to illuminate some areas nearby. Also, it's very warm, making it seem like this person was referencing a light source, uh, outdoor sunlight. Uh, so if you could just clean that up. The warmth really, it comes from the blood inside. It's usually the, the white of the uh, light source has to be preserved around wherever we have rim light. That has to do with fur or hair which is what you had here. This is accurate use of rim light. So I would desaturate that area. Um, okay, so sponge tool, desaturate. So I'm just gonna desaturate this back into some white. I'm not touching the whites on, the yellow on the uh, skin that much. Just up here near the hair. Down here, yes, because the light should be getting to my... <clears throat> so before, completely flat face staring at the camera like the camera was level but the body was complete worm's eye so it's 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 a little bit confusing you have to be able to match your stuff like this um, I don't think you needed any more brightness any more uh, kinda like um, reinforcement of the bounce light from that body onto the chin I feel like it's good this way I would focus on what it is you're trying to do I would focus on more of a, a solid idea for the gesture. The arm looks very, very short and very small, very childish. Uh, to to exa exaggerate the perspective, I would shrink the head a little bit more and tuck it behind the body. So uh, that might help us with the arm problem, but you're still going to have to deal with the arm. You're still going to have to work on it. So tuck it behind, just like that. Um, okay, and that should do better for the perspective and the arm and the gesture should be a little bit more open. Remember the skinnier the object, the better you can show off gesture. That's the difference between a fat body type and a skinny body type. The skinnier body type feels longer, but someone of equal height, if they're this wide, they, they, they're not going to, obviously they're not going to feel long, um, but someone who is short can still be imitated as tall uh, because they're skinny enough to reveal the gesture in them. So when a chunky chunk does a little C shape with their body, you can really hardly tell because there's just so much filling in the spaces. 
but when a skinny person does a C-shape, you can really tell because there's nothing filling in the spaces. So that's why ballet is more graceful with the skinnier the body type, the more of the gesture, the more of the motion you see. Dancers, all of that stuff. Um, all together, there's just more grace to the body when it is more of a balanced weight. And so what we're doing here is doing exactly that. When we shrunk the head, the body less, felt less chubby and completed that C-shape. Um, to complete the C-shape more, I would tuck whatever this is in. If this is a, a like a peck or something like that, or a rib cage, it makes no sense. Uh, so I <laughs> look at these cuties. Uh, so I would um, I would probably just uh, tuck all that in, and then that'll kind of complete his body type. No matter what I did with Photoshop, the stupid liquify jitter was still there. I did the PC user configure whatever. Um, and it's still there. I cannot believe how glitchy and messed up Photoshop is right now. I want to make a video dedicated just to Photoshop. I don't know if they'll even listen to me. I just want to run them through the, mis the, 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 the issues with every single version. I'll tell them I have a perfectly functional computer, Windows 10, and still you guys have all these issues. It's like you don't care anymore. You made it subscription-based and you stopped giving a shit. I am so tired with Photoshop. Windows, Windows, like actual Windows, sent out a correction for their bad update that they did um, in these past couple weeks. And um, I, I really don't see anyone in any kind of forum anywhere discussing this jitter problem in the liquify effectively. Users have to make up their own little hacks to, to get things to work. And that's just not what we're paying $30 for a month, $40 for Premiere and Photoshop and all that. That's just not right. That's just bad business. And people talk, like people talk. People are starting to move away from Photoshop. People are starting to move into all kinds. I don't know what was the other one that someone recommended to me earlier. Autodesk is free now. I don't know what it is you guys have over us. You really don't have much over us. Um, and all these tools are perfectly interchangeable somewhere else. So you guys need to like, like give a shit. Anyway, I'm just going to smudge away at the hair just a little bit so it behaves less like a, like, like yarn starting to behave a lot like yarn and I honestly don't know where this hair is coming from is it only a mohawk like is that what the hairstyle is if it is then I guess just leave it like this but if he does have hair everywhere else you're gonna have to show that clip studio yeah someone was recommending clip studio and that it's perfectly fine there's no glitches it's not and and one thing that Photoshop's been doing Adobe's been doing is that they've been trying to fix what's not broken it's just like this constant meme um like w why why are you trying to fix things that cs5 was wonderful like if you want to add new tools make sure they don't interfere with other tools in any case before after before after let's flip before after this area here needs to be cut off nice sharp nostril before, after. The nostril should actually, the other nostril should actually be right on top of the other lip because it's just stacked right behind it. Okay, and then uh, maybe this nostril here could be a little bit wider. Um, it's hard to determine a read through a nostril when it's in subsurface scattering because it's no longer a... When nostrils glow in subsurface scattering, they are no longer a what? <clears throat> Procreate is really good contemplating getting an iPad Pro. <clears throat> um, time to use MS Paint. <laughs> Autumn Desk. <laughs> um, the subsurface isn't an x-ray, so no, we wouldn't really see bones. We'd just see the whole area glow inside out, really. That's what we would see. Uh, to extend our last week's last class's discussion on long face syndrome, let us talk about it. I talked about really uh, the reason why we have long face, and it is uh, the nose. It's the nose. It's the nose. It is almost always the nose causing all the trouble. All right, so the eyes don't really show off much length. The mouth isn't a length 
a lengthy feature. It's not a length based feature, but the nose is. The nose does have a length quality to it. So when the nose is super long, that's how we get a super long face. It kind of pushes you into lengthening the face. So almost all the time, because you drew the nose long, you accidentally draw the face long because the face has to fill in all the features. It has to have enough space to fill all the features. So some students do draw the face really long. Some students do end up doing this. Why? I think they do this because they don't start with a circle for a cranium and connect the rest for either side and decide where the chin is going to be and then identify where the jawline is going to be um, and where the cheekbones are going to be and find their symmetry and um, all the symmetry lines and all the perspective lines and then find where their ears are. I think that's what they don't do and that's why sometimes the face can be the cause for a long face, but almost always, probably, let's just give it an, a percentage, probably 80% of the time, 77% of the time, um, uh, that's because of the nose. And you guys, I, I, I saw the references you used. The reference you used to paint this did not, it was a short face. Go look it up on the Google Hangouts, I mean the Google page, uh, the Google community page, and you'll see the reference they used was not a long face. I didn't read through the post. Maybe they were referencing someone they know. I really don't know, but it, I, I, it's just not. A long face is a very particular feature, and when we are drawing tropes, like I told you guys before last class, a long face can be used for a maternal character, for a holy character, for an alien character, for, an, for a humanoid for an inhuman character, but typically for humans, be it an animal or a, a female, remember female beauty, young female equals baby, um, it's always a short face. It's always short and cute. It's not long and cute. Long and cute looks like this. Okay, but what's the difference between this and this? One is evil, one is cute. It's very crazy, the difference that a long face can make. We're using the exact same shapes, we just stretched one a little bit further. Why? Because a long face equals an adult. The first thing you do in order to age a character is to lengthen their face. Um, you can add, I mean, not everybody who's older, who's in their 30s or 40s, has laugh lines and wrinkles. Um, so laugh lines and wrinkles are not the way to age. You increase the size of the nose. Oh look, nose was long. And you increase the size of the face. That's why I say it looks mature because a long face with long nose are age signatures. Write that back to me. So what you had was you were literally telling us this girl is older than she looks. Don't be fooled by her young eyes. Like it was very uncanny. And that's the uncanniness, again, I referred to last time. It looks very uncanny when you confuse ages like this. You were using age signatures on top of young features. And that's what it is. That's why it was uncanny. That's why it looked weird. Um, I think you already adjusted the face to be a little bit shorter. I think this was even longer before. But you've gone through so many adjustments. You've posted this a number of times and still there is no serious adjustment for the face yet. And I need to talk about long face syndrome a little bit more in your work, okay? Hi there, I'm Mr. Rack and I'd like to take a moment to talk to you about long face syndrome. <laughs> uh, so before or after? Um, after, a little bit more cute, a little bit less masculine, which again, long face syndrome, long face as a feature can be masculine feature. So masculine feature, age, um, both the nose length and face length, okay? That's all long face. Because you, 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 you shrunk the eyebrows and because you, so shrunk the eyebrows, you kind of lowered the width, and because you gave her Eva Green flat eyebrows and hooded eyes, she just looked really super old. This is not Asian eye. Asian eye is completely hooded, meaning that it is a hill, and it catches the light all the way down. So this was, what you had before was not an Asian eye. It was like a Caucasian hood. Uh, which happens. Um, an Asian eye has a complete hood and much, much uh, narrower uh, space to the eye, so a little bit less of the pupils are, are visible. So if you are going for Asian eye, this, this is how you do it. Um, so this is more of an Asian eye right here. 
Um, I understand the beauty uh, appeal for Asian media now, especially in those like Monkey King movies and stuff for actors with really, really strong bridges. But it can be very, very masculine on a female. Uh, so if you were going for this, this is the Asian eye. As for where it was before, um, you need a crease. You need some kind of crease. Low or high, you need a crease because she looks old. Either she's Asian or she has a low crease for the hood. It's uh, The crease really, really woke her eyes up a little bit. All right, so flatten because I don't know what I did before this. <clears throat> so before, do you see what I mean by maternal? After. I mean, I feel like she'd have three kids right now. Her main worry is where to find daycare for her children while she goes to work um, in her real estate job. I, I really don't feel like this is a hero, a young hero. So thickening the eyebrows, lengthening them, give her more youth. I would extend this a little bit more. At the end of the day, you're casting. You're casting characters for your movie. I would not cast long face, um, uh, stressed out mom face. I would, I would cast someone who is a little bit more young, nondescript, so that I can write the character for them. Uh, now, I don't want someone to come in with already, you know, stapled on role for their particular face type. I'm sorry, but it's a very, very vain thing. Casting can be very, very harsh on a person. Thank God I'm not an actor. But long face is um, it's a very particular role. I mean, you never saw Meryl Streep in like a superhero type of movie, did you? She has a very long face. Uh, you never saw her in any kind of movie like that uh, because she didn't have that that face she didn't have it she had more of the maternal face the and she played a lot of moms okay so just be careful with long face no it is not a style no it is not your taste you're too young to understand what taste means uh you're still trying to figure out where to put light source if that's what your business is you have no business trying to figure out what your taste is focus on what's ahead of you this is a mom this is who you were aiming for, most likely. This is someone who I'd want to see a story about, because I don't know, I can't tell by looking at her what her role is. But with long face, I, I, I know the ups and downs of their life. They're worried about mortgage. <laughs> They're worried about their daycare. And, and she's well into her 40s, but she goes to yoga every Thursday. And that's kind of, she has that going for her. <laughs> okay. Really, really sad, but this is our field. <clears throat> The mouth is bothering me. It's not bothering me as long as they have their C-shapes, which they do. It's not really bothering me. I, I do wish you had some radial shades uh, just moving around here. But um, as for as for just, I, would, I wouldn't worry so much about the mouth. I would worry about why you chose all these, all you made all these choices, uh, whoever the artist is, um, and then take a look at uh, correcting them permanently. So, some more long face, and do you see what I mean by alien? This isn't beautiful, this is alien. Beautiful meaning objectively beautiful, standards beautiful. It's just alien to me, it's not cute, it's not someone I want to talk to, it's someone I see walking around in men in black headquarters. It's, it's, you know, dressed up as a human, which is exactly, exactly a character, actually, from Men in Black. The, the, the guy with the suitcase from Men in Black 1. He was a very, very long-faced person who actually looked like an alien. Shrink the mouth a little bit. And yes, these are beauty standards. If they don't agree with you, if you feel like I'm ostracizing you or whatever the term is, I really don't know the term right now. I don't remember it. I hope ostracizing, I hope, I hope that makes sense. But if I am just completely ruining your, 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 your perception of reality because I introduced a couple beauty standards to you, um, that's not enough reason to comment. It's not a very unique thought. I've been there, done that. I've heard people talk about it. Estorac likes to normalize everyone's opinion of beauty. No, I don't. Not really. If I, you want to get a job, you might want to listen to me a little bit because it's, it, you're not going to get anywhere if this is your default face until day 14. Um, so I'm not talking to the artists here. I'm sure they're going to be more than happy to get any critique. Um, you know, they're here kind of just pouring their guts out, trying to figure out 14 days of a portrait. But 
where you, where, whoever else has an issue with me telling you that there are standards you have to abide by. Uh, these are permanent. I didn't make these up. I didn't decide what everyone's opinion of beauty is. I just or I recognized and observed what everyone's opinion of beauty is. Take a look at all kinds of concept art around um, gaming and, and, and all of that. You will find the beauty standard everywhere. Again, if you don't like it, you can make your own little uh, island somewhere where you can live out your days in a tiny little bubble. Okay, so it was full on alien before. I'm trying to just normalize the skeletal structure. The skeletal structure of where it was before was long. At one point or another, it's not taste, it's not anatomy, it's not proportion because the skeletal structure under this dial is inhuman. Okay, so the eyes are not, I, I recommend you delay the eye, the pupils only because you're painting. Um, but once the painting is done, you bring in the pupils and the iris. You don't submit it without an iris. What are you practicing then? So please submit it with eyebrows and an iris. Um, yeah, the, I, no eyebrows really didn't help your, uh, your painting here. Careful with one, one very particular alien-like feature that I see a lot of um, faces have when someone is swollen or someone is sick. When the lower eyelids are swollen, it just raises sickness to me because it's starting to look a little too close to uh, eye bags. So do you see that? It doesn't read as a lower eyelid. It reads as a swollen, like swelling somewhere. So that, fixing that, making sure that the upper eyelid is almost always either equal or bigger than the lower eyelid. The upper eyelid should pretty much be the most exposed because it's looking forward. And then that combined with some eyebrows, just wh whatever, I'm getting a little bit artistic here. Just draw whatever is to back. Should make the face a little bit more easy to kind of just figure out. Okay, <clears throat> I don't have time to draw both, so I will do the unthinkable <laughs> in front of my impressionable students and just duplicate either side. Even though the next painting I'm going to look at did just this, and I'm going to be chastising them for it. This is just to save some time. <laughs> okay, so you see how normalized the face. You can keep the cheekbones this high. I don't recommend it, 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 it kind of getting a little bit too um, uh, masculine. I would just kind of ease up on the cheekbones. And then one last thing to make sure we don't have long face, widen the face just a bit. So this face is not the typical beauty Instagram model face. It is different. She does have a bit of a, of a distance between her nose and her mouth. Her jawline is a bit uh, weak, but her chin is very strong. Her cheekbones are very high. Not every cheekbone looks like this. Um, and her eyes are much bigger than her head. She's got more face than head. Um, so it's, it's actually in the intricacies. If you're not experienced enough in the beauty standards, you will see every face is looking the same. That is beautiful. <clears throat> okay, so this is the one where I feel like the artist flipped either side. I can't prove it, but, but, but one day I'll get you. I know that you you did, and I'm I'm just I'm I'm suspiciously looking at you right now. If this was a classroom, I could be wrong, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep I'm gonna I'm gonna keep thinking you flipped it. But the reason why I'm thinking you flipped it is because this literally looks like the unwrapping effect that you get with 3D modeling. Um, so unwrapping. <clears throat> Um, so let me, let me see, I'm just trying to avoid seeing any creepy shit on Google. Unwrapping 3D. <laughs> okay, so perfect. <laughs> it feels like an unwrapped face. All the volume is completely flattened out. So how do we fix this? Well, we find the cheekbones, we find the rest of the face, we, we just figure it out. All right, so we start off by not letting the temples have too much space to them. So we're tucking in the temples first. The temples do not face forward. And then we're tucking in the chin. We're making the eyes feel a little bit less stretched. So we're giving the eyes vertical volume. 
And then we are easing up on the chin a little bit. I really like female characters with strong chins. I feel like it's a redeeming um, uh, feature uh, from just looking like a delicate princess. A strong chin is a wonderful addition to like any protagonist. So if anyone designing a protagonist right now, female, strong figure, just go for the chin. Go for the strongest chin. It'll really bring out the strength in the character without um, damaging the beauty standard too much. Okay, so um, this should be helpful. I'm also going to give the nostrils a downward effect. Why is the density so damn high? can't believe I revealed all my secrets about penguins in Madagascar. <laughs> It really it's so funny aren't they so funny though remember that remember Pe penguins of madagascar escaped to africa or whatever um acting like i don't know what the title is um uh skipper was caught with those photos with the with the with the bobblehead <laughs> he used them to bribe <laughs> skipper has an affair with the um with the bobblehead hawaii doll before after <clears throat> apart from all that your values are so soft you are overusing your soft brush you, you it looks like plastic it does not feel like mattified skin skin is not made of plastic it is not that shiny um it is it's way way too much and this is an even further example of unwrapping so it's like two of the same two two each today <clears throat> And, um, shame, ding dong, shame. <laughs> um, do you really have to draw at the ears and the neck in the 14 day challenge? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You shouldn't be over detailing ears, honestly. That's a, that's a bit weird. The ears here are way too high, man. I hate the new liquify, man. I, I miss you, CS5. You were good to me. You were good to me, and I betrayed you. I miss you, CS5. You were, you were nothing but good to me. All these years, you've supported me. You've, you've, you've held my hand. You've helped me stabilize my business and, 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 and meet new people. All the while, you were... I'm going to start crying. <laughs> you were there for me as CS5, and I betrayed you for something shinier and younger. Oh, CS5, I'm so sorry. Okay, so I'm just wrapping. I'm doing the opposite. I'm unwrapping. I mean, I'm doing the opposite of unwrapping. I'm wrapping. Don't actually ask me to start wrapping. It's just too cringy. I'm turning 28 soon. I'm just, I'm, I'm that old now. So if I wrap, it'll just be bad. Bad news. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm just tucking it all in. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Okay, so before, after. Unwrapped. It's like you peeled her face from the sides, from the back seam of her, the back of her head. And she's kind of just like opening up from the back so you could program. Okay, another Men in Black reference. I think I should go watch Men in Black today. These are signs. I should read these signs. Anyone want to have movie night? We do have movie night on the Discord, but <laughs> we haven't had one in a long time. Okay, so. Okay, I'm just fixing this and that. And we are done. I've got my free on for recon. All right. What are some questions? Like a rubber mask. This is back last for baby to the ever sweeping waves of bullshit. And I mean literal bullshit. Rest in peace. May Photoshop CC live on in the afterlife. You mean Photoshop CS5. <laughs> you don't even name my baby right. <laughs> CC is like the cute young secretary, and, and CS5 was the wife who stuck by th stuck by you through thick and thin. <laughs> 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 
Um, so this is it for today. I think, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that was all that I had planned for today. So lots of long face, lots of unwrapping and really just bad treatment of the head. Um, it's not all about the face. Remember that the face needs a head and it is not something that is just willy nilly. Uh, you actually need to measure and draw the cranium. Make sure you start with a nice wide uh, base at the top, moving down towards a triangle shape towards the chin. Uh, make sure to include the jaw and all of that stuff. So that's it for today. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, anyone interested in joining the class, go to istabrak.com on the little Google Plus icon and uh, you'll be able to join the community. Please read the rules. The due date for the boss fight illustration bonanza is the 10th next Thursday. Um, even if you get started today, you can make it um, for the 10th with, with concept art and all that, but I've given you guys a lot of time already. And the sale, uh, the update officially will be out on the 14th, 100% um, last call for the 14th. Um, some stuff may be left out because we can't seem to figure out what the issue is. Some stuff, majority, 90% of the features and more will be back. Um, for the new update of Portrait Studio for the 13th and the 12th and half of the 11th, I believe. Uh, we will have a sale for Portrait Studio for anyone who doesn't have a copy right now, so you can get a chance uh, to buy it um, at the old price or lower than the old price. I still haven't decided. Um, and that's it. Thank you everyone for watching. I will see you guys on um, uh, Tuesday. I did have another tiny announcement, but I forgot. Let me just read some questions. It's been a while since I've read them. Could you put uh, could you put subsurface scattering in a master masterpiece type painting instead of just in a study? Um, I you know my opinion about masterpieces. You know that students rush into them too fast and worship them at an altar. Uh, but if you feel like doing a masterpiece just to discover where your issues are, you can do that and you can try it for mat for for subsurface scattering. Can you make a video on the skull? Um, the skull is pretty straightforward. There are not a lot of intricacies that go into it, uh, unlike skin color or grayscale or edge work or rendering, so it doesn't feel like necessary. I couldn't even fill an hour's worth of discussion on the human skull unless I was teaching a forensics class or something like that. Um, it's really very, very basic, um, so I might not actually do a video on the skull. But I did talk about it a bit today. Um, it's like the meme with the guy checking out the girl. Isarak is the guy. <laughs> and the girl is CS5 and the other girl is CC. <laughs> but this is 2015 CC. I did have to revert a little bit. Um, Isarak is so emotional today. <laughs> I really am. Isarak, oh my god, I have this have Skipper and the doll as a skipper, as a sticker stuck on my notepad. No way, please show me that. I love Skipper. <laughs> You guys know that by now. Um, I don't know uh, any more. I don't know. I don't think there's any more questions. Esther Mag, thank you for getting your critique on for Recon. <laughs> that's perfect, Jonathan. Oh my god, that's so perfect. <laughs> my hair tutorial is kind of old, yes. Um, most likely, yes, I will be updating it. I might do a, a whole day on hair. In fact, let's talk about it now. Uh, do you guys want a whole day on hair? And if you do, I'm not just going to just, just do it. I need you guys to also be a part of it. So whatever you guys, whatever homework you guys generate fills up the class. So if for next Tuesday you guys are interested in seeing some hair studies um, and hair critiques, do some hair studies for Tuesday. Uh, so, officially, ding dong, Tuesday is officially hair day, hair study day. If you guys want to do some studies, I will run a whole class on hair and how to pull off hair. I'll talk about how I did hair in some of my paintings um, that you see here. And I can talk about, like, what my technique is. Of course, you know my technique already, but it, it, I can just add to it and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, so just do some studies. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> Lots of yeses. Um, so on the 8th is hair day, do some hair studies, post it, I will, you can just post it on miscellaneous or challenge submissions um, or, or studies, I really don't know, um, but I might, add an, I might add an extra little studies category uh, for you guys to use. In fact, let me just, let me just 
I'm not I'm a business member right now. Okay, never mind. I'll do it later. Uh, I will add a, a studies category. Uh, is there one already? Local meetups, discussion, announcements, polls, class notes, fourteen day challenge, landscape, and Friday. No, there is not. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> Ding dong hair. Not a full portrait. It can just be a singular hair study. Uh, that's all that I really need. Just that you guys have attempted to do it. <clears throat> okay, and uh, oh yeah, play Patreon. If anyone's interested in Patreon, um, the registration for this month is over, but for next month, if, even if you register today, you'll be counted in for next month. Um, uh, even though we also might be able to find a workaround so you can attend this month. Uh, but uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, you can as a watcher. We are aiming for a thousand patrons, but um, uh, it can just be a single one dollar watcher. 1,000 patrons. It doesn't have to be a thousand of apprentice. So that would be really cool. Um, and that's enough. Thank you everyone for watching. I will see you guys on the Tuesday, the 8th for hair day. All right. Bye guys.